A Tesla Model 3 burned to a crisp yesterday, not far from where I live, and I was able to secure exclusive footage of the event. Now, I know a lot of people are concerned about electric vehicle fires. They're worried that they're more likely to have a problem with a fire if they get an electric vehicle versus their combustion vehicles that they've been driving for years. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to explore electric vehicle fires and try to help you decide if it's something you need to be concerned with. Okay, so first let's talk about what happened yesterday with the Model 3. It was a 2022 Tesla Model 3, and the driver reported that he struck an object in the road. Shortly after that, the vehicle started giving him some warnings that there was a problem with the vehicle. So he pulled over. When he pulled over, he started smelling smoke, then he saw smoke, so I guess he called the fire department. And not too long after that, I don't know the exact amount of time, but there was plenty of time uh, for him to exit the vehicle. He started uh, seeing a lot of smoke and then the vehicle caught on fire. This is eerily similar to the problem that the Tesla Model S had when it first came out 10 years ago. Tesla had a few fires with Model S vehicles when there was only a few Model S's on the road. There was literally, you know, I think a few thousand of them on the road that this is back in 2014. And uh, what happened was people were reporting that they were striking objects, the vehicle was going on fire. Uh, the object was impaling the battery. If it was like a metal rod or a, something that was strong enough, it would somehow breach the battery tray and ignite the battery pack. So Tesla almost immediately came out with a fix. They installed a, uh, and they retrofitted this and then started installing it on their, the new vehicles they were making, a titanium plate in the front edge of the battery pack and also an aluminum it was almost like a round debris shield to divert something that it would hit down away from the front edge of the battery pack and then the uh, titanium shield was behind that uh, and it worked because the problem went away i know there were i don't know exactly how many but there were definitely a couple model s fires that happened uh, because of the same reason uh, way back in 2013 and 2014 uh, and we kind of haven't heard about this since, so the problem must have been solved. Now, you wonder, does the Model 3 and Model Y have a similar issue? Because it sounds like that's exactly what happened with this person. Although we don't know all the details yet, but it does sound like it's exactly what happened. And my answer to that would be, I, I doubt if it there's a similar issue because back when the Model S had the problem, the vehicle had just launched. There were, you know, I, I, I don't know how many, but definitely uh, 10,000 uh, Model S's on the road, maybe even less, not hundreds of thousands or the millions of vehicles that Tesla has on the road now. There's about 4 million Model 3 and Model Ys combined worldwide. And we just haven't seen this happen enough for it to be a problem. So my guess is if if striking that object did cause this problem, it was a very unique situation to, to uh, have this happen. But nonetheless, I wouldn't be surprised if Tesla investigates this to see if there's something that could be done to make the vehicle safer as they did with the Model S. They immediately uh, rectified the problem. So um, the problem seems to be, have been caused by some kind of damage. It wasn't some spontaneous fire that just erupted uh, for no reason. And Tesla's not the only company that's had problems like this with vehicle striking objects. I know I've seen other automakers. I remember Xpeng Motors in China had an issue in Shanghai where their P7, not long after it launched, struck an object and it impaled the battery pack and a fire ensued. And there's been other vehicles where it's happened on also. For some reason, the Xpeng P7 just sticks out in my mind. But um, that's gonna happen. Uh, there's a lot of stored energy in a battery pack like there is in a gas tank. So uh, batteries perform differently than gas tanks. I, I don't know if you puncture a gas tank if it'll necessarily have a fire, but there's a lot of other ways you can ignite gasoline, and that happens with gasoline vehicles all the time. There's a lot of gasoline vehicle fires annually, but we're going to get into that a little bit later. Getting back to the Model 3 fire, one of the issues with electric vehicle fires is they're typically much harder to put out than conventionally fueled vehicle fires. And I think that's why we see more stories about it in the news. And that poses a problem for firefighters. They can't use conventional methods 
to put out the automobile fire, like a blanket or foam. And that's because electric vehicles or the batteries have something called thermal runaway. Now the cells in the Model 3 that caught on fire were 2170 cells, just like this battery right here. This is a 2170 lithium ion battery cell, just like the ones that were in the Model 3 when it went on fire. And the chemistry used in the Model 3's battery pack is nickel cobalt manganese, which is a very popular chemistry for electric vehicle batteries today because it's very high in energy density. But one of the downsides of the NCM batteries is that they're also more susceptible to thermal runaway. And thermal runaway is really one of the big problems that firefighters have with electric vehicles. They'll seemingly put the fire out and then 15 minutes, 20 minutes later, it'll start smoldering, smoking, and boom, it goes back on fire. And that happened with this Model 3. They had put the fire out, and then at some point later on, it started smoking, the smoke got worse and worse, and it flamed up again, and they had to go back and put it out again. Now, this vehicle burned so long that the battery tray completely melted and fell out of the vehicle when they tried to lift it up and put it on a tow truck. And that was actually a good thing because they were able to separate the batteries from the vehicle. They were able to scoop the batteries up, put them in large 55 gallon drums and isolate them and then just tow the vehicle away. What happens sometimes when the battery tray doesn't fall out of the vehicle, when it's still there, there's been instances where the vehicle is caught back on fire after the firefighters put it out while it's on a tow truck being towed to wherever they're going to store it. And uh, because of thermal runaway, and what thermal runaway, the problem with it is the batteries will create their own heat and their own oxygen. So they will they can just flame up hours later, days later. And I've even heard of isolated incidents where it's weeks later where the battery can flame up and, and uh, catch on fire again. And so uh, that's a big problem for the firefighters. It's not really a problem for the people that own the EVs, because if, if your car, whether it's gas or electric, catches on fire and burns up, you, you're done. You're getting a new car. Uh, but with, for the firefighters, it presents incredible problems, much more difficult. And we still haven't ironed this out. Firefighters still have to really figure out what's the best method of dealing with this. We've seen uh, uh, companies in Europe develop these dunk tanks where they actually pick the vehicle up with a crane and just put it in water and let it smolder in the water for a day before they remove the car. Uh, I know Arizona started taking the electric vehicles and putting them in like a dumpster and pouring sand over it and burying it in sand for 24 hours. So if it, it, if it does catch on fire, it's under the sand and it's just going to smolder itself out. We don't have a real good way of dealing with this yet. Uh, and I suspect that's something that I'm going to talk about more on my channel as we move forward. But um, that's really more of a first responder problem than retail customers. Because, you know, what you're concerned with mostly is, is the vehicle going to catch on fire? Is it going to catch on fire more frequently than a conventionally fueled vehicle? And if it does, is it going to happen so quickly that I won't be able to get out of it? Uh, and I, I think... All of those questions actually are answered favorably for electric vehicles. So let's talk about them now. This video, as well as all of the videos here on State of Charge, is sponsored by QMerit. Once I've helped you decide which electric vehicle charger you're going to buy, then follow the link in the description of my videos and have QMerit install it. First off, the entire industry is working very hard to make electric vehicle batteries less likely to have a thermal event, less likely to catch on fire. And there's a lot of different chemistries of batteries. I mentioned earlier that the Model 3 that caught on fire uses a very popular NCM chemistry. But now more and more automakers are using lithium ion phosphate or LFP battery packs. And they're much less likely to have a thermal event. They can catch on fire, but when they do, they're much less likely to spread to the rest of the pack. If you put it out, it might stay out on the first time and not really spread to the whole vehicle. The big difference with the LFP packs are is the temperature that they will combust, that they will spread and have a thermal event. The NCM packs, I think, are 
uh, around 300 degrees Fahrenheit is when they'll begin thermal runaway and spread. And the LFP batteries are somewhere around 500 degrees. So I have to get a lot hotter in order to have a thermal event. And there's other batteries chemistries that are being explored today that have promised to have even less likelihood of having a fire. And uh, I think a lot of the industry experts believe that you know, over the course of the next 10 years or so, we're going to have inter incremental improvements with this. And EVs will be less and less likely to have some kind of a fire. But uh, as it is now, they do have fires. Um, uh, you store that much energy in any one place, there's a likelihood that it's going to catch on fire. But what happened with the Model 3 yesterday was an external force created it by it striking this object and impaling the battery was how, what we believe happened. Uh, and what's happened with other vehicles, that's caused the uh, incident. But do electric vehicles spontaneously go on fire? And the answer to that is yes, they can. It, it's very rare. It does not happen often, but it does happen from time to time. And it, that also happens with combustion vehicles where a vehicle is parked in a parking lot and all of a sudden it catches on fire. But it can happen with electric vehicles, although the vast majority of electric vehicle fires were created because of some sort of an external event, a, a, a serious crash. The vehicle got impaled by some type of metal object or something that broke the battery pack. And when that happens, typically, the person has a lot of time to get out of the car. The vehicle doesn't burst into flames. It can happen if there's a catastrophic type of a uh, of a impact. But in most instances, like what happened with the Model 3 driver yesterday, he had plenty of time to pull over, call the fire department, collect his things, and uh, le exit the vehicle before there was even much smoke. But yes, spontaneous fires can happen. And the best example of that has been recently the Chevy Bolt EV. Now, GM has reported about 19 bolts caught on fire. And they did so because of a manufacturing defect from their battery supplier, LG Chem. The battery packs were made incorrectly and it caused the vehicles to catch on fire. 19 bolts got caught on fire. I believe that's the, the current count uh, out of a uh, little over 200,000 uh, bolts that were sold. And uh, that's a very high percentage. You know, that's um, much higher than what you would expect for uh, vehicles uh, to catch on fire. And uh, GM dealt with it. They issued a recall. They swapped battery packs. They swapped modules. They're still, it's still an ongoing uh, issue with uh, some uh, Chevy Bolt owners, uh, but the problem's been fixed. And uh, the new Chevy Bolt EVs don't have any issue. And I know that for sure. I have confidence that they don't because I actually just bought a Chevy Bolt EV and it sleeps in my garage at night and I'm Confident that I'm not going to have any kind of problem with it. Uh, you know, there was a problem. They issued a recall. They dealt with it. They fixed the issue. And that's kind of behind them now. So um, the basically, if you buy an electric vehicle, you don't have to worry about it spontaneously combusting any more than you would a gasoline vehicle. It happens. Uh, it happens with all vehicles because they're storing a lot of energy. And uh, when you store a lot of energy in one place and there's some sort of a defect or a problem with whatever you're dealing with, you could have a problem. But it's, it's unreasonable to really worry about that with electric vehicles because not only do they not catch on fire more than gas vehicles, they do at a much lower rate. We're going to talk about that next. There have been a lot of studies on electric vehicle fires compared to gasoline vehicle fires. And in every study that I've read, electric vehicles are much less likely to have a fire. And according to data from the NTSB and the Bureau of Transportation Statistics, electric vehicles are less likely to catch fire than gas powered cars. For every 100,000 electric vehicles, there's about 25 fires per year. Now in the same amount of gasoline powered vehicles, there's 1,530 fires annually. So you could see how much of a difference that is. That means your electric vehicle has a 0.3% chance of catching fire compared to 1.05% chance for a gasoline vehicle to ignite. That's a big difference. Now, Tesla keeps statistics on their fleet of vehicles and fires, and they report that they have five fires for every billion miles driven by their customers. You can compare that to conventionally fueled vehicles that have 55 fires 
for every billion miles driven. So, you know, I, I could go on and on. You could do search online and see study after study, electric vehicles are much less likely to catch on fire. So they're safer. They're, the the data's out. Now that we have millions of electric vehicles on the road, it's, it's crystal clear. They're less likely to catch on fire. They're less likely to spontaneously combust. And when you have a, a problem with an electric vehicle, let's say you strike an object and the vehicle eventually goes on fire, you've got plenty of time to exit the vehicle. Have there been isolated cases where the vehicle goes on fire relatively quickly after it's struck some kind of an object or had a, a very, very serious car crash? Yes, there have been, but we see that with gasoline vehicles all the time where the vehicle literally bursts into flame upon a, a, a severe in, instance like that. And hey, look, I survived five years driving in the back seat of my mom's 73 Pinto. So I know all about uh, <laughs> the potential for a gasoline vehicle to catch on fire. And maybe that's why I'm living on the edge and said, ah, I'll buy a Bolt right after they had this problem with uh, the battery packs. Uh, but no, that's not the case. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, Jim fixed the problem. There, there's no issue with the Bolt EV battery packs now. It was an isolated problem and it's been resolved. So uh, I hope this video helped you feel a little bit better about getting an electric vehicle. Um, will electric vehicles catch on fire? Absolutely. Uh, will they do so less frequently than gas cars? Yeah, absolutely. When they do catch on fire, do you have a lot of time to get out of the vehicle to safety? Most of the time you do. So, you know, it's really not something that you should concern yourself with. I know a lot of people still are concerned about EVs because they always make the news. When there's a car on fire and it's electric vehicle, you can bet it's gonna be on the five o'clock news. Meanwhile, there's hundreds of fires every day with gasoline powered vehicles and nobody's gonna put that on the news because it's not, you know, clickbait. It's not uh, a hot topic, but EVs are starting to become more mainstream now and everybody wants to consume as much information they can about them. And, you know, when there's an electric vehicle fire, it gets people's attention and that's why you see it on the news. Uh, but uh, honestly, don't worry about it. EVs are safe. They're safer than combustion vehicles. You're not going to have a problem with electric vehicle fire. Listen, if this is your first time here, please don't forget, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle news and reviews. And as always, thanks for watching.